chicken. This is actually chicken. Hey, what's up everybody? It's your girl Merle. And as you, many of you may know, I recently put out a video that was vegan tries lab grown meat for the first time. By the way, we call it cultivated meat. That's the new term now, not lab grown, but you can say whatever you want. But I will be referring to it as cultivated meat in this video. Let me just say, thank you for all the support and interest and engagement on that video. Y'all were excited. You had a lot of thoughts. I knew this was gonna be a controversial video before I shot it. I knew it. I knew it was gonna ruffle some feathers, but I I think it's really interesting and I think it's really important information, so I did it anyway. Thank you for the many of you who said I am not canceled. I appreciate that. I wasn't gonna stop me anyway, but it means a lot, so thanks. There were a lot of questions in the comment section, like, whoa, a lot of questions. There are a lot of gray areas. Cultivated meat is a cutting edge technology. We are watching history happen right now. There are still things that need to be resolved. There are still things that we don't have access to information wise. FDA approval just went through for upside foods to be sold in the US. It's brand new. The only place you could get it previously was in Singapore, which is why I was lucky enough to get it. So anyway, I did my best, okay? I looked for the most recent articles. I looked into like scientific journals. I was digging and digging and digging. My back hurts. I'm excited to share this information with you guys, but take everything I say with a grain of salt. I am not an expert. I am not a food scientist. I can just read what experts and food scientists say and offer you the best information I can. Do your own research. I've linked all the resources in my description. Let's just hop into this video. This one is from Calamity LOL. Hi Merle, I really enjoyed the video. My question is, did you find it hard psychologically to take a first bite? As a longtime vegetarian, I think I'd find it really hard to try even though it's not really neat. Love ya. Thank you, Calamity Lol. Love you too. Yes, I did. <laughs> I was sweating. I mean, multiple people commented on it. I mean, it's real meat. It's real chicken meat. Even though it wasn't like factory farmed and the chicken didn't die for it, it's still meat. I haven't had the taste of chicken on my lips in like six years. It was definitely really weird, but having done a lot of research myself into like how lab grown, sorry, cultivated meat is made, I felt a little less like guilt or anything like that. And just more, I was like more apprehensive. But then I was like, you know what? This is amazing. This could possibly be a solution for our planet to like cut down on emissions and stop all the madness in the factory farming industry. And I wanted to try it. I've been wanting to try it for six years. So yes, it was hard, but I persevered. Ruby, how did you feel physically after eating it? I saw this question a lot. I felt fine. I know some people have said like if they've ever gone back to eating meat or whatever after having been vegan or vegetarian for a while, they'll have like stomach problems. I got nothing. I, I didn't feel groggy. I didn't feel like bloated. I didn't feel bad. I felt weird psychologically, but like, I didn't, I didn't have any physical effects. I felt fine. And so was Aria. Okay, next one is from Zoe Lu. Question on the cultivated meat itself. I heard that the biopsy cell extraction process sometimes harms slash kills the animal and the serum used to grow the meat is sometimes animal based, like bovine serum. Could you add your perspective on how much harm is done on animals to produce cultivated meat? To be clear, I still think it's a huge step toward forward regardless. Okay, thank you, Zoe. This is easily the biggest question I have myself. And also, I think the question I saw maybe the most in the comments, this issue is like fiercely debated online. I scoured the internet to find a final result on this question and I could not find one. Some internet blogs were harshly against it, saying that like the cell extraction process would be very painful and uncomfortable for the animals. And then others claim that it's relatively harmless or that they can numb the area for the animal ahead of time. So it's tricky. And I personally would like more transparency if I were to, to buy and consume cultivated meat myself in the future when it's more readily available. I would want to see it. I'd want to see what the, you know, living conditions are of the animals. I'd want to know more about the process. This is something I found very interesting. PETA. We know PETA. PETA is like the loudest vegan in the room, but they actually endorsed cultivated meat years ago. They even went so far in 2008 to offer up $1 million to the first scientist who could kind of crack the code on cultivated meat. And they publicly endorsed cultivated meat in 2017 as well. PETA also issued this statement that said, people are surprised to learn that PETA is interested in lab grown meat, but we have overcome our own revulsion at flesh eating to champion a breakthrough that will mean a far kinder world for animals. $1 million is a lot of money, 
but it's a small price to pay for something that has the potential to save about 1 million lives per hour. The fact that PETA is aligned with this process leads me to believe that it's not too painful and cruel to the animals. But listen, there is again, a lot of gray areas here, right? Like do we know, what are the, how are the animals being held? The ones that are the donor animals? Do they take a biopsy from the animal? Do they numb the spot? Do they let them recover afterwards? Do they never do it again to the same one? This is the kind of thing that as cultivated meat becomes more approved and available, we'll learn more, we'll know more, but just know I have my eye on this as well and I'm also very curious about it. The thought process behind it for me that makes me excited about cultivated meat is that instead of slaughtering hundreds of thousands of millions of animals, you are taking a biopsy from one donor animal that yields a lot of results. And I've seen a lot of blogs mention the fetal bovine serum and I know that that was a part of the process at least early on in developing cultivated meat, so that's terrible, but that was a thing. On the bright side, back in 2022, Mosa Meats, who was the first to produce a lab-grown burger back in 2013, released a paper to Nature Foods to announce that they successfully removed fetal bovine serum and other animal components from its entire process. And they said instead they can use things like amino acids, sugars, or peptides. Mosa also said that FBS free agents are 80% less costly, which reduces the cost of cultivated meat. That's a win, 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 win. Anyway, you can read this very scientific paper that they published if you want all the nitty gritty details. I've linked it below. Okay, so this next one's from RN, IRN. How did you prepare for the potential backlash? How well do you think this will be perceived by the normal consumer? How scalable is this technology? Well, I know that there was some survey that was sent out there and something like 50% of people, they would be interested in trying cultivated meat or they'd be interested in cultivated meat. So that is promising. A life cycle assessment projected that cultivated meat could be comparable to conventional meat by as soon as 2030. Obviously this is a projection. So like there will be a lot of different factors that will affect if it'll actually meet that goal, like FDA approval, increasing interest, investors, and technological innovation for things like large volume perfusion bioreactors. Yeah, I'm gonna leave that one up to someone else. <laughs> but how did I prepare for the backlash? Honestly, just the way I've prepared myself for any backlash on any other controversial thing I've said in the vegan space. I just do it. If I think it's something that resonates with me or if I think it's gonna help people or it's important information that's gonna help the planet, I just do it. And then I deal with the backlash later. And if it hurts my feelings, I have some ice cream. Okay, so on the question of how scalable is this technology, Good Food Institute, which is a nonprofit, so they're trying to figure out the cost of a kilogram of lab-grown meat, right? And they're saying that over the next about nine years, they can bring the cost down from about $10,000 per kilogram to like $2.50. And then in February, Future Meats announced that they had a breakthrough in their technology. Now they're claiming that they can produce the same chicken breast for around $1.70. Okay, next, questions from Callie. Hello, Callie. Does the meat itself hold the same nutritional harmful aspects like same protein and cholesterol in it as regular meat? I found this Wired article that said, it can be optimized for maximum human nutrition, like a fortified cereal. Producing meat in this way may reduce its exposure to diseases, pesticides, bacteria, and antibiotics. Then I found an article, a very, very, very information dense article from the um, National Library of Medicine, which said, quote, although these are not yet known, we speculated on the potential health benefits and drawbacks of cultured meat. Unlike conventional meat, cultured muscle cells may be safer without any adjacent digestive organs. On the other hand, with this high level of cell multiplication, some dysregulation is likely as happens in cancer cells. Likewise, the control of its nutritional composition is still unclear, especially for micronutrients and iron. Again, it's just gonna take more research, more technological advancement, more transparency with the public as it is approved. Another positive aspect related to cultivated meat is that the animals are not being raised in these crazy confined, small, dirty environments. So the risk for pandemics is significantly less. Next question is from Katie. Hello, Katie. How often does cell extraction have to happen? Like how much cultivated meat can be produced from one cell extraction? There are mixed answers to this question. It's a good question, but it depends on what kind of meat is being cultivated. It really depends on the company and the meat. This is what I could find that hopefully will shed some light on this question for you. So the co-founder of the cultivated meat company, Wild Type, which makes cultivated salmon, 
issued a statement that said, quote, we start by isolating cells from salmon found along the Northern Pacific coast. This process needs to be completed only once for every species because cells like a sourdough starter in bread baking are able to grow nearly indefinitely. And then I found this thing from Future Meats, another cultivated meat company that makes beef, and they claim that they can yield 10 times higher than the industry standard while generating 80% less greenhouse gas emissions using 99% less land and 96% less fresh water than traditional meat production. Okay, next question from Jason. What sort of implications would the discovery, for lack of a better term at the moment, of cultivated meat have on dairy options for vegans in the future? And then I found another similar question, which was from Yvonne. Can it be applied to other types of food? Thank you, Merle. Thank you, Yvonne and Jason, for your questions. So yes, the answer is yes to both. Yes, it can be used for other types of food. Yes, it can be used for dairy. I actually was just in a video with my dear friend Rachel where we tried lab-grown dairy. It's got a ways to go, it'll take some time, but it's really exciting. There's chocolate, there was cream cheese, there's ice cream. There must be cheese out there somewhere, but we didn't try like a block of cheese. Also, it can be done for different types of meat. Good meat, the one I tried, is obviously focusing on chicken. Most of meats is focusing on beef. Wild type is focusing on salmon, and there are so many other cultivated meat companies out there that are focusing on different things. I also believe I read somewhere that there's like a Wagyu beef cultivated meat in the works, which is very exciting. And another thing that I think is really exciting is that cultivated meat can be a fantastic option for food, for companion pets like dogs and cats. Because I know that's something that I personally struggle with. I have an elderly cat, Genevieve, who I adopted. You know, she was in the shelter for a year and a half. I was like, I'm saving a life here. She's an old girl. She's the best girl. She's a good woman. We love you, TT. You're such a good girl. But I feel guilty all the time for feeding her cat food. I mean, her wet cat food, her dry cat food, it's made from meat. And I know those animals are not living in good conditions, but I know cats can't live without meat, so. And then there's this other article I found by Fast Company. I don't know how I feel about this one, if I'm honest with you, I think it's weird. Basically, they're saying that cultivated meat could possibly lead to a whole new market in exotic animal meat. I read a New Yorker article. They were talking about cultivated meat for celebrities, that projecting that like in the future, celebrity meat will be for sale if people want to eat humans. You know, with every innovation, there's a dark side and, and a creepy, weird corner. I don't even know how to talk about that. Okay, next question is from A. Hey A, did it taste better than every vegan meat substitute you've tried or is there a vegan meat you think tastes better? It's meat. It tasted like meat. It tasted more like chicken than any vegan chicken alternative I've ever had. That said, I don't think I necessarily need to eat chicken. I don't think I necessarily need to eat meat. Like I'm pretty content with the substitutes we have available today and I've gotten really used to not having meat in my diet. I'm more excited about it because of the positive impacts it could have on animals and the environment. I think my interest in this topic would be if I was visiting a country and there was cultivated meat for like a cultural dish, then I might be intrigued to try it. But for day-to-day -day life, I'm kind of just good on my plant-based diet. The next one is from Teal or Teal-y, hello. Do you now, after having it some time ago, still think it's vegan even though it's made out of animal cells? I don't know if I think it's vegan because you're still taking a biopsy from an animal. I think it is cruelty free if that animal is treated well and that is not that entire animal's life. But I don't think you can call it vegan. I don't think so, personally. That's kind of where I've landed on it. Doing a video about it, trying cultivated meat on camera and showing people like I wasn't scared to do that was more of my own personal statement towards like, this is really important technology and I think we should all be learning more about it. You should know about it and maybe not be scared of it or at least embrace learning about it as it develops because it could possibly save our literal planet and millions of animals lives. I mean, at the rate we're going with climate change, like our current model is not working. For those who are going to continue to eat meat for other cultural reasons, religious reasons, or just because they want to, this feels like a much more sustainable and less cruel way to do it. And then Catherine, can there be another name for people who are vegan but eat cultivated meat? Just like how there's pescatarian for people who are vegetarians but eat seafood. Really great question. And I'm assuming there would maybe be another name for them. Or maybe you could just fall under plant-based. But if you have an idea for the name of people that identify as vegan, but they eat cultivated meat, hey, let me know. If you have ideas, drop them down there. I'd love to see what you can think of. But otherwise, I feel like plant-based is probably the closest umbrella term. The last comment that I included, just because it made me smile, is from Watchdog. Hello, Watchdog. It's your squirrel, Merle. Ha, nah, can't wait to eat it. Uppy, uppy, Miss Buppy. And on that note, <laughs> I'm gonna bid you guys adieu. I hope I answered some of your questions. I hope I gave you some new information. I'm sorry if some things were confusing. I learned a lot, so thank you for all of your wonderful questions. I'll see you guys next week. And in the meantime, if you wanna hang out between videos, I live stream on Twitch two to three times a week, and you can join my Discord, chat with me on there. All my socials are 
in the description, along with all of my sources from this very long video. So go check them out, read up on them. If you have any more questions, let me know below. Give me your thoughts. Let me know if this made you more interested in cultivating me, less interested in cultivating me. All right, you guys are the best. Have a wonderful rest of your day and ciao for now.